Okay, so yesterday I stated Felper's conjectures, sort of the, the first conje conjectural description of the full structure of tall logical ring of MJ. Um, I said the status is that the first two parts about the high behavior and high cohomological degree are proven, the vanishing and the one dimensionality with the explicit proportionality is in degree g minus two. And then this last part is, well, it's true for g less than 24. But for g greater than 24, uh, greater than or equal to 24, it's still open. So, so today I'll be sort of discussing some of the reasons why this, this last conjecture is, I mean, it's still open, but it, it's getting less believed in. Um, so, so I want to start by, by first mentioning that there are versions of Faber's conjectures for other moduli spaces of curves. Were, these versions were stated by Faber and Pantarapanda. Um, several years after this. So, well, wh wh which other moduli spaces do we want? So I'll have to define a couple of those. So MGN we know is moduli of smooth curves. So far we've mainly been talking about MGN smooth curves when we have no marked points but we could have marked points also. The, on the other end of the spectrum, we have MGN bar. Said a lot about moduli of stable curves. In between, there are two important um, intermediate moduli spaces. There's MGN rational tails and MGN compact type. So there are inclusions In all of these. So what are these intermediate spaces? So again, this is RT is rational tails. DT is compact type. And it's easy, going to be easiest for us to define these by posing constraints on the dual graph of the curve. So remember, with smooth curves, the dual graph is very simple. You have a single vertex, you have no edges, because edges correspond to nodes. Um, whereas with MG and bar, we, the dual graph can be arbitrary stable graphs. For these intermediate ones, so rational tails, start with that, that's saying that it's Stable curves is dual graph contains a vertex of genus G. So this implies that all the other vertices have genus zero, they're rational curves. So the way to think about this is that um, you have one main component, which has the full genus, and then when marked points come together, remember marked points are not allowed to, to stack on top of each other normally, but if they come together, they bubble off into these rational tails. And you can get these sort of trees of rational tails, uh, trees of rational curves sprouting from the main component. And th this is often more convenient space to think about than MGN itself, because MGN rational tails um, is proper over MG, whereas MGN is not. Of course, if N is zero, then, then MG zero rational tells the same thing as MG. So this really generalizes the case MG that we talked about before. Compact type, stable curves, whose 
dual graph is a trait. So this contains the rational tail space because the rational tail space always has to be a tree. You can't have loops because you have one vertex which has all, all the JNS on it. So these chain of four moduli spaces are sort of the main things people talk about. You can define other things, of course, but. And the versions that Fopper and Pantarapanda stated were taking Fopper's conjectures and replacing MG with MGN rational tails, MGN comeback type, or MGN bar. I should maybe mention that the reason why this is called compact type is because this condition, so it's saying the dual graph is a tree. That's equivalent to saying that every node in your stable curve is separating. If you remove it, the curve is disconnected. And that you can see is the same thing as saying that the Jacobian of the curve is compact. So that's the compactness, compactness of the Jacobian. Okay, so how, how do these versions work? You can put any condition on the graph. These are just the most natural geometrically in some sense. I mean, people sometimes talk about, for instance, MGN irreducible, where your graph has a single vertex but can have lots of loops. That's something that's talked about. But there isn't a version of, of Faber's conjectures there. Um, there's also a reason why this chain of, so I mentioned briefly that the explicit formula, which I haven't bothered to write out again today for this um, isomorphism to Q, that explicit formula really comes from the grove theory of P2. And in the same why in compact type corresponding theory is, is related to grove theory of P1 and MGN bar, it's related to grove theory of a point. So there's some sense in which this chain, rational tails, compact type, MGN bar is, is, um, is a, it, it, it's really a nat natural progression that shows up in the applications of grove theory. Okay, so what are these versions of Faber's conjectures? So, so for MGN rational tails, I want to replace G minus two by G minus two plus N. So this, this G minus two here, the degree of the top dimensional non-vanishing piece of the tautological ring we call that the so-called degree because as a Gordon seed ring, this, this top dimensional piece would be the so-called of the ring. So from G and rational tails to modify Popper's conjectures, you just want to shift that up by the number of marked points. And again, MG zero rational tails is just MG. So this is sort of the simplest generalization. You have to modify the explicit formula, of course, also. You have more classes. You don't just have polynomials in the kappa classes. But the conjecture is still, and I should say for rational tails, it's, the status is very similar to MG. It's still open. Um, is that you have this Poincare duality type ring with top degree piece and degree G minus 2 plus n. The explicit formula is a different one. It's quite similar in this case for rational tails, but. Right. I mean, there are also more classes than just the kappa classes. So the tautological ring in all of these, I said I'm always defining it by restriction from MGN bar. In MGN bar, we have these basic classes corresponding to every graph that appears, and you push forward some um, cap and psi classes. So in the MGN rational tails, you actually have non-trivial graphs. You also have some psi classes. So you have more tautological classes than just the kappa classes anyway. So the formula has to be different because you have different inputs. I, I'm not going to write out the explicit formulas in, in all of these cases because of that. They get more complicated, especially in the last case, because you just have more tautological classes to pair. But the basic idea of it, that this should be a Gorenstein ring is going to be the same in all of these. MGN compact type. 
replace g minus 2 by 2g minus 3 plus n for mgn bar replace by 3g minus 3 plus n. So, and yes, we have to plus change explicit proportionalities. Part two. The new explicit formulas, I and mean, they're actually in rational tails and compact type if you, um, if you just pair together kappa classes, for instance, they're, they're very similar to the MG formula. Um, for MGN bar, it, it gets more complicated. I mean, the question of what does, for MGN bar, this is actually the, the, the top degree pairing. You're integrating classes on the full MGN bar for the explicit proportionalities for the third version of the conjecture. And that's given by Witten's conjecture. It's been proved by Konsevich and others. So that, that's sort of a, a much more complicated combinatorial formula of recursion. You actually need a recursion for in the case of MG and VAR. But the basic um, structure of these conjectures, that you have a top, top degree piece is one dimensional, top degree happens at a specific location, and that you should have the Sponkery duality. Those are the features which are the same between, these con between the versions of these conjectures. I think that they originally stated as speculations rather than conjectures. Yeah, so, so, so the last one is interesting because if you took the full cohomology, it would be trivially true. Um, yeah, so, so. Right. Yeah, so, so I'll get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, the, the, the last one is in some ways more plausible because, um, I mean, it's, it's not an obvious fact that the top degree piece of the, chow, of the tautological ring should be one dimensional. And the top degree piece of the Chow ring is certainly not one dimensional in all cases from GN bar. Top degree piece of so zero dimensional cycles, when are points equivalent in the as algebraic cycles, much low rational equivalence on MGN bar, you expect there, the Chow ring is going to be enormous. So it's a non-trivial theorem that I should say parts one and two, the fact that you have this one dimensional circle at the top of each of these rings in those degrees have been proven. But they're, they're non-trivial even in this case of MGN bar because we're dealing with Chow ring rather than cohomology. So if you want, you can view the one dimensionality in this top degree equal to the dimension of the moduli space as evidence for what I was saying earlier that tautological ring really looks like it's the same in Chow and cohomology. There's no obvious reason why, why they should be in this top degree piece because again, top degree Chow of MGN bar is going to be gigantic. Top degree cohomology is one dimensional. The tautological ring really picks out one dimensional piece of the Chow ring. That was, I think, first proven by, by Graeber and Fakiel. Okay, so this looks great. There are these other versions of the conjecture, just changing some numbers around for these other naturally defined moduli spaces. The explicit formulas for top degree proportionalities come from Gerald Wynn theory in, in a very natural way. But there's a problem with these versions, which was discovered in the last couple of years, which is Peterson and Tomasi um, proved that R star of M220 bar and R star of M28 compact type are not Gorenstein. So these 
Bernstein conjectures are false in all cases other than possibly MGN rational tails. Which again, MGN rational tails is the natural generalization of MG where you add in marked points. So these results are pretty recent. Um, but really, I'd say half of, the, half of the reason to doubt Vauber's conjectures for MG, since, I mean, the, the Gorenstein property, it's true in small cases, just as, just as it was for MG. Like for MG, Vauber is able to verify it for G up through 23. And then after that, we don't know. Um, in the case of like M, M2 N bar, um, I believe they also proved that it is Gorenstein for M2 N bar for N less than 20. So this is really the first time. So it takes quite a while. And you might also notice 20 is remarkably close to 24. There could be some relationship there, and this isn't known. I, I should say these Gorenstein conjectures, they're analogous statements. But there's no logical implication between any of them, between like MG and bar, MG. And there's, there's no easy way to get from one to the other. So th these counterexamples found by Peterson and Tomasi, they don't imply anything about MG and rational tails, but they are suggestive that the Gorenstein property was some accident that happened in small, small cases. Um, I speculate that like th there are some actual geometric reasons for the one dimensionality at the top and for this intersection formula there. And the fact that you have that pairing is sort of making it somehow plausible for the ring to be Gorenstein. But once the ring gets large enough to be complicated, then in these cases, MG and bar, MG and compact type, it, it apparently stops. The, the first n for genus two, yeah. It's not known for, uh, just for two, yeah. Uh, um, I mean, there, there are some cases in higher genus where, where we've computed by constructing relations and checking that the quotient is Gorenstein seen that it's true. For instance, I think for M3 bar, maybe M4 bar, maybe even with a point or two in there, we, we, we can compute that those are Gorenstein. But they, they were using methods very specific to low genus. Basically, they were using, um, they, they made a very detailed study of the spectral sequence for computing the cohomology of these moduli spaces, viewing them as vibrations fiber, over M2 bar. M2 bar is this relatively low dimensional thing. They had some hope of understanding the spectral sequence. But it gets much harder when you move up even to genus three. We all just state out loud because it's certainly not so, but there's some speculation that some reason to believe that M38 rational tails might be non Gorenstein also. But proving that seems out of reach at the moment makes genus 3 so much harder than genus 2. I should mention that um, on the other side of things, we do have Tavakal proved that. R star of M two N rational tails is Gorenstein for every N. Yeah. So if, if R H is not Gorenstein, then that implies that um, that R is not Gorenstein as well. It's a stronger statement, slightly. Yeah, I and mean, they, they, they were working, like I said, with these cohomological tools, so only able to prove things about cohomology, but it's actually stronger because um, things not going seen as saying it's missing some relations. If it's, if it's missing those relations in cohomology, it's also missing them in chow. Okay. Yeah, there, there's some, some experimental evidence and also some conceptual evidence that M38 rational tails might not be Gorenstein. But that's, 
I mean, I, I've talked about uh, it with, with Peterson a bit about extending his methods there, and I think he's working on it, but it seems harder. There's some conceptual reason to believe there should be a problem there. Okay, so this is the first main piece of evidence against, against Faber's conjectures I want to state today. That there are these completely analogous conjectures for these other moduli spaces. They're true to start with in small cases, just as they were for MG, and then they stop being true at some point, at least in genus two. I should say that there are some means for moving these around, like I think if it's false for, if it's not Gorenstein for M220 bar, it's also not Gorenstein for M2N bar for any N greater than 20 or something like that, or at least for all sufficiently large N. Um, it's not going to be Gorenstein. That's just the first counterexample, but they actually have infinitely many genus too. I, I don't know if you can move the counterexamples to higher genus, but. Okay, so the first evidence, things don't work as well for these other moduli spaces. We know for a fact that they're not Gorenstein. The other evidence I won't say I, I hinted at before, which is that Fob, Faber's original means of producing relations he used to prove for G less than 24 it suddenly started failing for G equals 24. So. Maybe I'll do a little survey of, of just the different geometric methods that have been used to prove relations between the kappa classes, just on MG, though a lot of these methods also produce relations in some of the larger moduli spaces. Methods of constructing relations. in our star MJ. Not a complete list, but these are some of the methods which have been studied, um, studied a lot either by um, lots of computer search, as in the case of Faber's method. So Faber's method used certain classical maps between Vector bundles over CGD equals D fiber power of the universal curve CG, so MG1. So C CGD means that you take a curve, you take D points on it, but as opposed to MGD, the points are allowed to stack on top of each other. You're just seeing the fiber product of lots of copies of the universal curve. And define certain vector bundles over that by taking, um, having the fibers be sections of cer certain, um, certain sheaves on your curve. And very classical constructions. This is Faber's construction. I'm not going to say that much more about it right now. And that's actually the one method I'm going to talk about. Uh, one method I'm listing here that we only have computer evidence here for what these relations span. First, the second, the geometric source, just listing geometric sources, virtual class of moduli space of stable quotients. Some simple moduli space of sheaves. And if you know about moduli space stable quotients, I'll just say this is specifically moduli space thing over P1. It's very close to moduli space of stable maps to P1. And by applying localization to this virtual class, you can get relations. work of Hunter upon and myself. And 
Another geometric source, I'm just listing a lot of different geometric sources that have been used. There's Wooden's R spin class, um, which is um, a very special class described by Witten relating to taking R roots of canonical bundle a curve. It forms a cohomological field there. So when you use this along with the given tall Telemann classification, of cohomological field theories, you get relations. So I'll, I'll actually say, be saying more about cohomological field theories um, probably tomorrow because they're one, of the, they're one of the main sources of interesting tautological classes. A lot of things fit into this framework of cohomological field theories. But these relations, Pantara Panda, myself, and Dimitris von Kane. Two more sources of relations that I want to mention. So there is, maybe I'll just write geometry of the universal Jacobian. over mg1. By geometry, I really mean some, there's an SL2 action on the Chow ring here, and by using that and at some point pushing down to mg1, you can get relations. This is work of yin. Finally, I mentioned that this is also related to Jacobians, but taking powers of theta divisor on the universal abelian variety. This, this approach was really First, first taken seriously, I guess, although people were somewhat aware of it by Grushevsky and Zakharov. So there are five methods using different geometric sources. There are definitely relationships between these. And the result of all of these is that not only did, so these are all, all five of these methods have been studied to see what, what do they give in M24, in this case where we have a missing relation, or what do they give in, in higher cases. And so what, what ideal of relations do these methods produce? So all five methods produce the same ideal of relations. And in order to be precise here, I should say what, what, in what genus they produce the same ideal of relations. So really this is known that the Last four methods um, have been proven to give the same relations for all G and the Fopper's original method. Um, 
does the same according to computer. Let's say, if, I, I forget exactly how high he checked this, but certainly for g equals 24, g up through 30, and there's some question with his original method since a priori he's producing infinitely many different relations in every single location. So how do you check infinitely many relations by computer? But uh, it seems by computer that does this, that it does the same, it gives the same set. The, the, these, these methods are all um, relatively recent compared with Faber's original method of constructing. So basically, Faber's original method, it seems less amenable to um, actual, um, actually proving things about what the relations are than these more recent methods, but they do seem to give the same results. Yeah, for every genus. So I should I should attribute that to some people, but ne neither way is known. I, I I don't think it's hopeless to, but people haven't tried that much because there's not much gain for showing that it gives exactly the same as these other four methods. I mean, it'd be nice to know, and there's some, but there's some technical reasons why this is sort of harder to study, despite having sort of the same general flavor. Like, it's very plausible that, that it could be done, but it hasn't been. So I should say that, that the equivalence is, I mean, there are various people involved in it, but the main name I should say is Felix Yanda. Um, proved that under certain, he proved the general result that in some sense any homological field theory gives the same relations. And that with, with some work immediately shows that, that these two methods should give the same. They both have cohomological field theory. And then with some more work, you can connect that to here, should also mention Clater. And then the connection between these two, they both sort of involve um, Jacobian Sibelian varieties. There's a, another connection here due to Yen. So that's sort of the chain of equivalences. There are possibly some other names I should mention here, but sort of the key result in combining all of these is the statement about cohomological field theories, which again, I'll be saying what a cohomological field theory is tomorrow. Okay, so this is really the, the, other, the other half of the evidence which is causing people to doubt the Gorenstein conjecture for MG. Both it's false for MG and bar or MG and compact type due to peterson Tomasi, and the fact that we don't just have one method of producing relations which according to the computer is missing some. We have all these different methods which, I mean, we, we know something about how they're connected since we can prove that they're the same. But I mean, there's a fair amount of work to prove that they're the same. And they all give exactly the same relations, not only as each other, but according to this, which we only have the computer to verify for us. So these all give the same relations. All are missing relations for G greater than or equal to 24. It, uh, it's um, cohomological degree 12. R12 of M24, there's a missing relation. So a kappa polynomial of degree 12. It, right, so the missing relations, we don't know whether it's 36 or 30. Yeah, but we, we know from the pairing, though, since, I mean, we, uh, uh, 11 pairs with itself, R11 of M24 pairs with R11 of M24, and we have enough relations there to get a perfect pairing, which means there can't be any more. Yeah. yeah. This is, this is certainly one possibility. So I, so I will say that if, 
if Faber's conjecture is true, there's still something special about this set of relations. I think it's fairly clear from all of this. And there are sort of two main possibilities I see for that. One is that this ideal of relations, if it's smaller than the actual ideal of relations, if it's missing some relations, then this is the um, sub-ideal of relations that are true in cohomology. Uh, they're true in Chow as well as cohomology. The other relations are just true in cohomology. So that would be the situation where Faber's conjectures are true in cohomology but not in Chow. And these are the relations in Chow. That, that's one possible hypothesis, certainly. The other possible hypothesis is that these relations, um, this idea of relations, these relations have the property that they extend to the boundary to MGN bar. And now, you might think you're guaranteed that relations should extend to the boundary in some way, but they don't need to extend to the boundary um, in a tautological way. So um, these relations on MG all extend to tautological relations on MG bar as well. So you might think that maybe the re missing relations are relations on MG which somehow don't extend tautologically to MG bar. That's the other possibility. It's certainly not obvious with all of these methods that they extend, but with some of these we know that they extend. Um, Specifically, the cohomological field theory methods naturally give relations on MG and bar, not on MG. So there are definitely possibilities to reconcile all this evidence here with the with Faber's Gorenstein conjecture. I think that if this was the only evidence, then we would be um, not as convinced. But this combined with the other half of things that Gorenstein conjecture fails in, in MG and bar, MG and compact type is it fails for tautological cohomology. So yeah, if it's something specific to cohomology, then, then yeah, that doesn't explain why it fails for MG and compact type or MG and bar, aside from those being different conjectures. Okay, so they all produce the same ideal of relations. In time remaining, I want to actually say what this ideal is, give, a, give an actual explicit statement of what the ideal of relations is proved by, um, constructed by all the last four of these methods, and which seem to be given by the first method as well, according to the computer. So, what is this? Ideal of relations. The ideal of relations is all, all the relations we know how to prove. So this idea of relations is um, generally known in the literature as the faber zagier relations. Um, since the, the, I mean, the, the history here is complicated and I, I wasn't around back at the time rather wasn't in, involved in, in the field back at the time these relations were come up with. But my understanding is that these relations date back to almost as old as Faber's original Gorenstein conjecture. Um, so, and that these were sort of, um, this family of relations um, Faber and Zager um, it came up with um, by looking for families of relations that, that are compatible with the um, pairing into top degree in the Gorenstein conjecture. So what are these relations? So for any D, D Finite list of relations in RD of MG.
and they're parameterized by certain partitions. Parameterized by partitions sigma with no part congruent to two mod three. So only parts allowed are one, three, four, six, seven, nine, ten, and so on. And there's some bound on the size of the partition. You need size of sigma to be less than or equal to 3D minus G minus one. And also size of sigma should be congruent to 3D minus G minus one mod two. Parameterized by this finite list of partitions depending on G and D. So, need a little bit of notation before I can give the formula for that formula for the relation given by GD and sigma. So first, some power series. We have the A series is some hypergeometric series, summation n equals zero to infinity, six n factorial, divide by three n factorial, two n factorial, p to the n. Also the B series, which is very similar. Obtained by applying some differential operator to that. N equal, summation n equals zero to infinity. Six n plus one divided by six n minus one times six n factorial divided by three n factorial. Two n factorial t to the n. So these are just formal power series. I also want notation for inserting kappa classes into formal power series in T. So if I have a series summation CN T to the N, put curly braces outside with a sub kappa, then this should be inserting kappa classes in by multiplying the coefficient T to the N by kappa sub N. Summation CN kappa sub N T to the N. And final piece of notation that, that will make this convenient is something that I stated yesterday also. Um, the curly braces over a monomial in the kappa classes, and this was the summation over L in SM product over C cycle of tau, kappa A sub C. A sub C is some of some of the A sub I's. And we, we extend this linearly as some, um, as some Q linear automorphism of the ring of polynomials in the kappa classes. Not, not a ring automorphism, but so, that's a notation I'll need to write down the FZ relations as they're usually known. I guess some other notations. So sigma is some partition. Let's say sigma sub i is number of parts of size i. Sigma. So it's not the ith largest part, it's the number of parts of size i. So given all that, this is, this is not, how, um, not how Faber originally described the relations to me, but it's equivalent. The relation 
again parameterized by GD and sigma. So, okay, so I want to start by taking one minus the series A, insert kappas, exponentiate that, some power series in T with coefficients, which are polynomials in the kappa classes. Then I want to multiply that by take B, insert kappas, raise that to the power sigma one, number of parts of size one, take T times A, insert kappa classes, raise that to the power of sigma three, B, sigma four, squared A, sigma six, and so on. Sigma only is part of your zero or one mod three, parts of zero mod three correspond to A, parts of one mod three correspond to B. Some finite product because only finitely many of the sigmas are non-zero. If I take all of this, I apply this automorphism to all the kappa polynomials appearing. And now I take the coefficient of T to the D in this series. So this is actually some polynomial in the kappa classes. So again, there are a couple of equivalent ways to write this. This is the most compact in some sense. And then the, so, so these are the relations Um, originally discovered by Hopper and Zagier, and well, it, they they, I mean, Faber was able to notice that these relations matched up with what his computer was producing using his method of constructing relations, even in genus greater than twenty-four. And turns out, now theorem, these relations are actually true. So using the second of the methods I listed there, the moduli of stable quotients, Pantarabanda and myself were able to prove that these are actually relations in the tautological ring of MG. Again, for sigma, satisfying those inequalities there. So, this, as I said, this is actually the ideal produced by, by all five methods, in the first case experimentally. So, again, just state that clearly. All our methods of constructing tautological relations seem to give exactly the FC relations. By exactly, I mean have the same span. Um, probably not obvious from the formula, but the, these, as I've defined things, these, the additive span of these is actually an ideal. I'm saying that, that it's fairly easy to prove that additively they, they form an ideal. Uh, 
I mean, the statement here is that all, all the methods of constructing relations that we've been able to, to um, study in high enough genus to tell, say genus 24 or greater, seem to produce exactly the, the ideal of relations which is additively spanned by these relations and no more. And that's a theorem that, that, all, that of the five methods I listed, that methods two through five there give exactly this. So in the first case with Faber's original relations, that's just an experimental statement. So, well, based on this, the natural conjecture is an alternative to the Gorenstein conjecture. This is something that it, it certainly wasn't stated by F or Z, but I'm so called FZ conjecture because that seems like a natural name, is that every relation in R star of MG is a linear combination of FZ relations. Main motivation for this conjecture is just we've never constructed a relation that is not in this family, including by Faber's original computer method. In fact, we now have several proofs that these relations are true, several methods of, of producing all of them. So the status of this conjecture is We'll write it like this for G less than 24. Both the Gorenstein conjecture and the FZ relation conjecture are true. For G equals, I think it's 24 and 25. Exactly one of Gorenstein and FZ conjectures is true. For G greater than or equal to 26, at most one of them is true. Somewhat silly way of saying things, but the, the content of this is that for G less than 24, we know the full structure of the ring, and both this description explicitly giving relations and the Gorenstein description give the same result, which is what we know. So they're both true then. For G equals 24 and 25, the discrepancy between these two conjectures is exactly one relation. It's either true or it isn't, so exactly one of the two conjectures is true there. Then for G greater than or equal to 26, there's more than one relation of discrepancy. So it could be that neither is true, one of them is true, but they certainly aren't both true. These relations are not enough to make the ring Gorenstein in general. All right, so there, there's some way, it, it, there's some ways in which this conjecture is less appealing than the Gorenstein conjecture. I mean, the duality is very nice. Duality is a very clean way of determining structure of the ring. Uh, th this conjecture does have, th have some advantages that it, I mean, it's an explicit list of relations. And although this is somewhat complicated combinatorially, um, you're actually sort of forced to have at least this level of complexity in the sense that um, these, like the A and B series are really forced to show up if you look at the first couple relations. So I should say some words about that. So here, remember, size of sigma is less than or equal to 3D minus G minus 1. That means that there are no FZ relations if 3D minus G minus 1 is negative. So... So 
these inequalities is possibly I should copy over to the theorem since I really do need them for these to vanish. Okay. Size of sigma less than or equal to 3D minus G minus 1 congruent mod 2. First, meaning in lowest cohomological degree, FC relation pairs for G equals scaling of G plus one over three. And depending on the value of G mod three, that relation might be unique. Unique in two cases, there will be two different relations in the third, initial relations in the first case. So if you think about the case where g plus one is a multiple of three and d is g plus one divided by three, then sigma has to be the empty partition. And you don't have any factors after here. You have a much more simple, you have a much simpler combinatorial expression in that case, which just involves this A series. So that, that's a sense in which you're forced to use the A series. And if you like look at some different parity, you're in some sense forced to use the B series because the unique first relation um, involves the B series quite heavily. Uh, yes. I guess what I wrote only happens when G is one, so. Okay. Partly because of this, I now get back to something which is a theorem originally, I believe, due to, I know, which is that R star of MG is generated by I want to take, uh, it's like kappa one, kappa two up through kappa, I guess. I'll just write ceiling of g plus one over three minus one instead of figuring out what that's equal to. That is, you don't need any of the other kappa classes. So, what does this mean? It means that each kappa class after this point can be written as a polynomial in the lower kappa classes. And if you stare carefully at this formula, you can check that, that this formula actually gives a proof of that. But, um, I mean, I, I know proved this theorem earlier using relations which are more or less the, I believe that the INO more or less used the first relation in, in this family by some other construction. But you really do need all of these generators um, because, I mean, the first relation happens after this. So up to this G over three approximately point, the tautological ring is free polynomial ring on the kappas, then you start getting these relations. And according to this FC conjecture, those relations are precisely given by this formula. All right, I'll stop there for today. Um, tomorrow I'll, we'll be shifting back to MGN bar. So I want to talk about cohomological field theories and also how to extend these FZ relations to MGN bar. <laughs>